In this training video, we'll talk about how to use the stack. Now the stack is the crossfader pair that you see here with two manual crossfaders, a go and a pause button. You'll also see the stack button here which is used to activate stack mode and to record a stack. A stack is really a series of lighting cues that you'll use to run a regular production. Your stack can have up to 99 whole numbered steps or cues as I like to call them and you can insert up to nine point cues in between each cue but you cannot exceed 199 steps in a stack. Now the lighting cues or steps in the stack can contain memories which was what they would probably most most commonly contain or individual channels as they can on the 21 through 24 faders. So let's take a look at how to record a sequence to the stack. Now the first thing you'll probably want to do is create the memories that you want to use in the stack and I've created five memories here, one through five. So as we did before I'll say record sequence, this time I'll select stack. Stack exist, erase and make new, I'll say yes. And here I'll be recording to the crossfader and I'll put my first step in there and you'll see that as I'm doing this it will happen live on stage so now it's bringing up that first step and what I can do now is change the time for my second step so I could reduce the time to a, sl a faster time and add my second step and it'll fade to it add the third fourth and fifth steps and I just chose not to change the times on those I can always change those times later and then once again just as we did before hit record sequence again now when I finish recording the sequence the the smart fade will be reset to the mode that it was in prior to recording the sequence and now I'm ready to play back my stack to play back a stack I'll first activate stack mode and I'll do that by to pressing the stack button one time and it'll now show up bright yellow. The LCD changes to show me that Q1 is pending in the stack and that it is consists of memory page one, memory number one. Now when I hit the go key, I will fade to the first step in the stack during in the time that we previously set. And once I have completed that fade, the LCD will change to show that I am now pending Q2, which is memory page one, memory number two in the stack. And once I hit go, I can once again run to Q2 and so on through the rest of my stack. Now that's the most basic operation and playback of a sequence stack. And of course there are several other things that I can do. For one thing I can use the pause key. If I hit go and then need to pause the action of the lighting, I can just hit pause. It'll stop right where it was and then I can hit go again and resume the fade just as it had left off. I may also wish to go back to the previous step and you'll notice that pause and go are connected with a the universal symbol for back or rewind and that's reminding you that if you press the control key or actually on your smart fade if you hold down pause and hit go you will back up a step in your sequence. And that's very commonly done in a theatrical production because you usually find yourself going back and forth between scenes during rehearsals. Now I can also run a step manually using the crossfader pairs. So if I hold the two crossfaders together and on the virtual smart fade, once again I use control to do that, I can now manually fade into the new step. And when I reach the top, I can now return them to the bottom and pick up the next step and manually fade it in. If I separate the two faders, I can fade the outgoing lights on the left side and I can fade the incoming lights on the right side. That allows me to control, as I'm watching the scene, the lights that are going out and the lights that are coming up. And once again, when I reach the top, I have completed that fade and now I can return the crossfaders to the bottom and grab the next cue in the stack. So while I'm using the stack, one of the common things that I'll probably want to do is adjust 
what I'm currently seeing on stage in terms of the lighting levels. And I can do that by saying Edit Memory and then Stack. The console will shift into channel mode and it will show me the levels that are currently on stage and it will highlight the channels that are included in that memory in green. Now by level matching, I can now adjust the levels of those channels. I can add in an additional level from a new channel. And when I'm finished, I just hit Edit Memory. And now I've made the update to the stack and changed that memory. And it will always look that way when it plays back. And while working with the stack, I'm also likely to want to change the times of the steps after they've run. And I do that in the LCD menu by going to the Sequences area, hitting Enter, selecting the crossfader pair, and then I have the option of modifying the steps, the content that's included in each step, or changing step timing. I can change the step timing for one step. And here I have crossfader step, step one. Once I select step one, I can change the uptime and the downtime, U here and D here, individually, meaning that I can have a, the lights coming on in a one time and the lights going out in a separate time. I do that just by selecting up or down and moving the encoder so I, I can make it a very fast uptime, hit enter, make it a slower downtime. And there's a third attribute called wait time. And wait will allow you to input a time and after the step runs, it will wait that period of time and then automatically run the next step. That's what we would commonly refer to as an auto-follow queue in lighting design. And that allows you to run a, a sequence or run a step and then have it automatically execute the next step. Right now, there is no wait time. If I added one, it would operate in that way. So that allows you a lot of flexibility in the way you edit the timing of your various steps in your stack. We're almost finished with basic stack operation, but there's probably a couple of other situations you'll run into. One is you'll want to be able to jump around to the different queues that are in your stack. And you do that by holding the stack key down and by moving the encoder. So if I say jump to step two and then I release the stack key, you'll see that Q2 is now pending. So when I hit go, I will now run Q2 instead of the next queue that was scheduled to run. And that allows me to jump around in the sequence that I have set up. Now you also notice that I have a rewind all the way symbol connecting clear and go. And what you might guess there is that if I hold the clear key down and hit go, I will clear the lighting that's on stage and reset the stack to Q0, or the, the zero step, with the first step pending. Meaning that as soon as I hit go, I will run Q1 and be waiting for Q2. Those are the basic operations of the stack, and of course you'll find more about it in your manual. You'll find the stack is a great way to run your productions and keep the lighting consistent from evening to evening.